In the dark of the midnight Have I oft hid my face Till the storms howl around me And there's no hiding place Mid the crash of the thunder Precious Lord, hear my cry Keep me safe Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder Many times Satan whispers, there is no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope, by and by, but I know thou art with me, when tomorrow I'll rise where the storm never darkens the sky <coughs> till the storm passes over till the thunder Nelson's favorite song. He loved that song. What a wonderful truth that we hear in that song this morning. Keep us safe till the storm passes by. It's not a matter of if storms will come. They will come, but I'm glad we have one that holds our hand and helps us. And this morning, if you don't know him, I hope that the choir and through the preaching and through everything that's done this morning, may we introduce Jesus to you. He's the greatest friend I ever had. I highly recommend him. Uh, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but there's one thing I got right, and that was that night that I bowed at an old-fashioned altar, and I invited Jesus to be my Savior. Good to be in God's house this morning, thankful for the Holy Spirit, and uh, thankful for each and every one that's come to be with us this morning. If you're visiting, you're our special guest. We're so glad that you've come to be a part of this service today. Let's just worship God. As Lee said, this may be the last time. Let's worship God as though it were. Uh, one of these days we'll gather together and this may be the day and uh, we'll be worshiping. I, I can't help but believe the Lord will come right in the middle of a service and he'll take his people home to be with him. I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to ask the blessing upon the offering and then please remain standing and help the choir to sing as we receive the offering. Let's bow our heads together. Father, we want to thank you this morning for he, the Holy Spirit, and Lord, for the special invite that we've had this morning to come and dine. Uh, Lord, we ask today that you'll bless the offering. May it be used, Lord, for your glory, for your honor. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll touch the hearts of each person that's here. Lord, you know our needs. We pray, Father, that you'll supply those needs. May we lift you up in this place. And for that, Lord, we'll be careful. We'll praise you. We'll thank you. Lord, you alone are worthy. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
D.L. Moody made a statement over and over and time again that when you hear that I'm dead, don't you believe it because I'll be more alive than I am right now. I have a home. Amen. God has placed eternity down deep in my soul It is a sense that life will continue when this world is gone I have a dwelling place with God built by Him alone I'm ready to claim my inheritance sweet, oh, I have a home. I have a home. I have a home. A place where God wipes all tears from our eyes and death cannot come. There'll be no crying, no mourning, no pain. All things will be new The old passed away When my life here is done I will keep living on Oh, I have a home Place my body in the ground But don't weep long I will be praising my dear Savior Bowed at His throne I will enjoy sweet rest with Him Like I've never known A thousand years is as one day with Him Oh, I have a home Oh, my God. 
preacher Bill Wheat from this community about three o'clock in the morning a couple of days ago went to his new home and uh, I'm glad that there is a land amen that we have a home as God's people Jesus said I go to prepare a place for you you can camp out on that promise there's some things in life that we don't understand but I, I'm glad that the Lord has fixed it that uh, we're going to a better land for that all things will be brand new and the troubles and the trials of life uh, Bill had to battle pancreatic cancer for the last, I guess it's probably been close to a year, and went through a lot of pain and went through a lot of suffering, but about 3 o'clock in the morning while he made that journey to that land where there'll be no more pain, and I'm so grateful. We're looking this morning in Psalms chapter 121, Psalms chapter 121, it's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, uh, I, I love the Psalms, I, I just love this book that God has given to us uh, it's such an encouraging book uh, David goes from the heights to the depths but uh, the the thread that is weaved all through this book is that it's a book of encouragement and even in David's toughest moments God reminded him that he was with him and so this morning may God remind all of us that are here today no matter what we're facing in life that he is with us promised us in Hebrews chapter 13 he said I will never leave you and I will never forsake you uh, I've had some friends down through the years that left me uh, I've been disappointed I've been a disappointment to others but I'm telling you this morning he has never disappointed me he has never left me been with me since the beginning he'll be with me all the way through the ending Psalms 121, would you stand today as we look in God's word together? Psalm 121, we'll read that chapter, that's just eight verses, beginning with verse 1. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even for evermore. Lord, we want to thank you for he, the Holy Spirit, that has reminded us that we have a hope and we have a home. And this morning, as we look into your word, I pray that, Lord, that we'll glean those truths that will help us, not only while we're here, but when we leave this place. Lord, I pray as we look at this songbook, may there be a melody in our hearts that brings us closer to you, Lord, brings comfort from your precious word. Now give us strength this morning to preach. And Lord, I pray that every ear will be attentive and every mind will be focused upon the word that you speak to us. And Lord, we'll be careful. We'll praise you. We'll thank you for all that you do for us, all that you say to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This makes the fourth Sunday morning in a row that I've been looking at the uh, songs from the Psalms. Uh, the book of Psalms is a song book. I love what Dr. Adrian Rogers said years ago. He said, this book is a hymn book because it's about him. From Genesis 1 to Revelation chapter 22, you find that scarlet thread that runs from chapter to chapter, from verse to word, verse, from word to word. It's all about him. Even in Esther, where God is never even mentioned, you can see God in the shadows. And we're reminded that this book is about Him. We've considered a song for yesterday. Things that have happened in the past that you and I, uh, maybe we would like to go back and erase them, but that's an impossibility. And yet the Bible says the things that have happened in the past that we have trusted Christ for forgiveness for, those things are under the blood. As Paul said, we can now forget those things that are behind and then we looked at a song for today. This morning, uh, there's many right here in this building. I'm convinced that 
desperately need a song from God. Uh, you need to hear a word from God. You're going through a difficult time. Things have happened in your life that you just don't understand. Troubles have come. Uh, sometimes they do come unexpectedly. In fact, most of the time, they catch us off guard. And we need a song for today. Then we need a song for tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I have no idea what we're going to face. I've often said this. I'm glad that God keeps that uh, from us. That we cannot see what the problems that we're going to face tomorrow. It would rob the joy of today. But I am guarantee you that when we get to tomorrow, God will already be there. He is not like me. He's not confined by time or space. This morning, I want to close out this series of messages, and I want to think about a song for any day. Whether it's yesterday, today, tomorrow, any day that you need a song, I believe that we can look in Psalm chapter 121 and discover that God has given us a song for any day. I, I love music. I I'm not a singer. I, I don't play any instruments. I can't even get the radio on the right channel most of the time. But I love singing. I, I love to listen to singing. I, I, I believe that music is uh, it, it's just something that gives us soothing for the soul. It's a universal language all across this world. Uh, people love music, every culture, every creed, and every color. Music is a universal language. I want to ask you a question this morning. And uh, you don't have to answer out loud. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but would you consider yourself to be an optimist or a pessimist? Uh, now, I'm not going to ask your wife, uh, uh, even though I could, and I could find out real quick uh, whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. But I heard about an optimist that was talking to his pessimist friend, and uh, he said, boy, isn't this a beautiful sunny day? And the pessimist said, well, said, if we don't get some rain, said, my garden's going to dry up. Well, about two days later, it began to rain. And so the optimist went to his pessimist friend. And he said, aren't you glad for the rain? He said, if it doesn't quit this rain, then it's going to wash my garden away. <laughs> and so the optimist, he thought, well, I want to try to encourage my pessimist friend. So he decided he'd take him with him duck hunting. And when they started to go duck hunting, he brought his duck brought his hunting dog with him and he said to his pessimist friend he said now this dog is unlike any dog that you've ever seen this is a very special dog and I'll show you here in just a little bit what's so special about this dog and so they went hunting and sure enough uh, the ducks began to fly over and uh, the optimist he shot one of the ducks it fell in the middle of the river and uh, that dog it, it ran out on the water all the way out to where the duck was picked up the duck in its mouth and ran all the way back on the water uh, to his owner. And uh, the optimist looked at the pessimist and said, didn't I tell you that this was a special dog? What do you think about my dog now? He said, I don't think very much of him. He said, he can't even swim. <laughs> well, I don't know who wrote. We don't know who wrote Psalms 121. We know that David wrote many of the Psalms. We know that Solomon wrote some. We know that... Other authors wrote some of the psalms. We don't know exactly who wrote Psalm 121, but I do believe that he was an optimist. I believe that he was a man that uh, could not only give encouragement, but he was a man that received encouragement. And, and this morning, he gives us, this psalm is broke down so, uh, so simply for us. I, I believe it gives us uh, just the ability to understand it uh, in a great way, there's three stanzas in this song that gives us a message for any day. Gives us a song for any day. Uh, whatever situation that you have found yourself in this morning, this psalm provides encouragement. And so I want to look at these three great truths that we find in Psalm 121. First of all, we find this truth that the Lord is our provider, He is our provider. The psalmist has done, uh, told us what we need to do when we find ourselves in trouble. And yet we find that at times the psalmist did not practice what he preached. He looked for help in every place but the right place. He tried everything but the right thing. And he asked every person but the right person. One thing that is common to all of us this morning is this. We all have problems. 
Job said, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And then in Job 5 and 7, Job says, man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. Homes have problems. Churches have problems. Our government has problems. Sadly, too often we look for the solution in all the wrong places. Uh, there's folks that would think, if we could just have a better economy, uh, uh, things would get better. But dear friend, if we had the best economy, still problems would come. And, and then we think, if we could have a new president, by the way, no, I won't go there. If we could just have a new president, things would get better. Uh, but dear friend, the Bible teaches us that God is the ruler over everything, and it doesn't matter who's in the White House. It matters this morning who sits on the throne. And then we think, uh, we think that maybe uh, we can find the solution in this area and this area, but the Bible teaches us, verse number 2, the psalmist said, My help comes from God, the God that made both the heaven and the earth. Who would you rather have as your helper than the God that created everything? David said, my help cometh from the Lord. Think about this. A God that is higher than the hill. He's mightier than the mountains. He's greater than all the generals. He's a God that's in a league all by himself. How do you think that the psalmist referred to this God as the God that created everything? Well, dear friend, he was simply saying, the God that created everything is in control of everything. The Bible says not only did he create everything, but by, by him all things consist. He holds everything together. You realize if it wasn't for the power of God that uh, we would just absolutely, we would fly into pieces. And uh, if there wasn't a gravitational pull that God has created, we'd just fly out in outer space. God not only created this world, but God holds this world together. And dear friend, he holds my life together. Holds your life together. The God who created everything controls everything. It's no wonder Jeremiah, when he looked at the creative powers of God, he declared in Jeremiah 32 and 17, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there's nothing too hard for you. The Bible says that he's the creator God. It doesn't matter what your teacher says. It doesn't matter what the professor says. We didn't just evolve. We just didn't accidentally get here. God spoke everything that is into existence. Amen. Psalms chapter 33. The Bible says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters together as a heap. He layeth up the depths and storehouses. Let all the earth... Fear the Lord, let all the inhabitants of the earth stand in awe of him, for he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. He's the creator God. The God that created this world controls everything. The Bible says in Psalms 115 and verse number 3, Our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Whether it's a time of trouble or tragedy, God is our hope. And sometimes, dear friend, when God is the only help that we have, He is always the only help that we need. God is our help in a time of trouble. I was thinking about His creative powers. I was standing out in the backyard a few days ago, me and my family, and there was a bolt of lightning that hit so close you could feel the ground shake. And by the way, we decided then it was time to get out of the backyard. But have you ever considered just a bolt of lightning, the power that there is in just one single bolt of lightning? It is said that in one bolt of lightning, that when it passes through the atmosphere, that it heats up the air that is around it to a temperature that is five times hotter than the surface of the sun. Buddy, that's powerful. In one bolt of lightning that you can only see for one three hundredths of a second. I mean... It's just there and then it's gone. But in that one bolt of lightning, if you can harness the power of one bolt of lightning, it would be enough to power one billion homes for one month. That's powerful. When I think about that bolt of lightning, I'm reminded that that's God's creation. That God is the one that has created 
that lightning bolt. And so the next time you look up into the sky when it's storming and you see that lightning bolt, just be reminded of the power of God. God is the creator God. The Bible says here that in verse 3, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Basically what the psalmist is saying, He will not allow you to fall. He promised He'd supply all of our needs in Philippians 4, 19, according to His riches and glory. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 25 and verse 26. Listen to this and see if this doesn't apply to us at times in our life. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. What he is saying is that when trouble comes, God will keep you from falling. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. And then I love verse 3 and 4. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. As a parent, I've discovered that you cannot watch your children every moment of every day. I discovered that Friday night when we kept my little granddaughter, Abigail. I mean, we blinked our eye and she was in the other end of the house. I mean, you just can't keep up with children. You cannot watch over them every second of every minute of every hour of every day. That's an impossibility. And yet the Bible says the God that watches over us shall not slumber nor sleep. He's always beholding our face. Do you know the reason this morning... Uh, that you should be able to sleep at night and, and, and not, no matter how deep your need may be, it's because God doesn't sleep. When I go to bed at night and, and I don't even realize that I, I'm even in this world, God keeps an eye on me. God watches over me. During World War II, the Germans were bombing uh, Great Britain. And every night, it was just an onslaught. Every night, they was bombing places in, in London, England. One night, it was an, ex it was an extremely uh, difficult night. They bombed and they bombed and, and, and a lot of people were killed. And they began to look for this one little lady that they couldn't find. They looked everywhere until finally somebody found her. And they found her in a place that they never expected to find her. They found her in her little bedroom asleep. And so they asked her, they said, Miss Smith, how in the world... Can you sleep with all this bombing going on? Are you not afraid for your life? And she said this. She said, well, the Bible says, He that keepeth Israel shall not slumber nor sleep. So I figured there was no need for both of us to stay up. It'd be wonderful if you and I had that same attitude, wouldn't it? No need for me to stay up. The Lord shall not slumber nor sleep. And so the Lord is our provider. Secondly, the Lord is our protector. Verse number 5, the Lord is thy keeper. That word keeper means to protect or to guard. And then in verse 5, it goes on to say, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense until you begin to study the history of what the psalmist is saying. In those days, a soldier had two, basically two pieces of weaponry. He had a shield that he held in his left hand, and he had a sword in his right hand. With that shield in his left hand, for the most part, his right side was unprotected. But notice this here this morning. The Bible says, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. God protects us at our weakest points. The Lord is the one that watches over us. Oh, dear friend, the Bible says in Psalms, 1, Psalms 18 and verse 30, he is a buckler, that means a shield, to all those that put their trust in him. Then he goes on in verse 6, The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Refers to the sun because the sun gives off heat. Sometimes we go through those, uh, uh, go through those fiery trials, don't we? In fact, 1 Peter chapter uh, 4, verse 12 and 13, Peter says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which shall try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. They're going to happen. We're going to go through the fiery trials of life. 1 Peter 1 and 7, Peter talks about that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that's tried in the fire that it might be found unto praise and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We're going to go through some fiery trials. And yet the Bible says here that the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. 
Things begin to be heated. Things begin to be fiery in our lives. I'm glad this morning, dear friend, that God protects us. He protects us in the sunshine and in the moonshine. He protects us both day and night. He is our protector. God takes care of his children. Paul Harvey, may I miss that man, don't you? You talk about a, a, a wise man, a man that really loved the Lord and such an intelligent man. But one of the, I used to listen to the stories that he told. and One of my greatest stories he told was when the uh, Germans, when they were going to go and they was going to, uh, Germany, we was fighting against the Germans, we was fighting against Japan and and uh, this B-29 bomber was going, it had a specific target that it was going to bomb in Japan. They was going to a place in Japan that was called, uh, called Kokora. And they was going on a bombing mission. Well, when they got to Kokora, Japan, the, the clouds so obscured their primary bomb site. Uh, they flew around and they flew around until they thought they was going to run out of fuel. And finally, they made, up, made the decision very reluctantly, but they made the decision, we need to go to our secondary target. And so they left Kakura, and they went to the second, secondary target, and they began to bomb the secondary target. About a week later, the Army Intelligence, they came up with, the, with some facts about Kakura. And the fact was that a week earlier, unknown to anybody, they had moved thousands and thousands of POWs to Kokora. And if they had bombed Kokora, thousands of military men would have been killed in that bombing. You know what their secondary target was? It was Nagasaki, Japan, where the second atomic bomb was detonated. And had it been the primary target, those thousands and tens of thousands of American soldiers would have been killed. Who do you think protected those men in World War II? It was God that put his protection around those men. It was the men and women that were still in America that was on the side of the hill praying that God would protect our military that kept our men safe. Your friend, this morning, he is our protector. The world would like to drop those bombs of doubt and discouragement and depression and despair and disappointment on you and I each day. But God is our shade and God is our shield. Then last of all, the, God, the Lord is our preserver. Verse 7 and 8. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. It's talking about temptation, by the way, in, that particular, in those particular verses. And, and let's face it, we're all tempted at times. Tempt temptations come in all varieties. They come in every color. They come in every size. But there's one thing about it. Temptation comes to all of us. The Bible says here, he'll preserve us in a time of temptation. By the way, I saw some things in this that I'd never seen before. I'm glad the Word of God is like that. It's not like yesterday's newspaper. Things that I have just absolutely glossed over and didn't see. And then every now and then the Holy Spirit, it's like He turns the neon lights on and it just jumps off the pages at you. And that's what I saw this week. And this, that word protect, it's translated keep in other parts. And it means per, to preserve. The Lord preserves us. Verse 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Now this is what I discovered. The evil that he's talking about is not the evil that folks do to us. It's the potential evil that we do to others. Matthew chapter 6. You remember when Jesus said, he gave us the model prayer, and he said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I don't know why that I, I just missed this. But I was always thinking when he says, deliver us from evil, that he was to, do, I was praying, God would deliver me from the evil that Satan would like to do to me. And I do believe that's a part of it. But he prefaces that by saying, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. 
Jesus, when he gave the model prayer, he's saying this, you ought to pray that God would protect you and God would preserve you and keep you from doing that that you ought not to do. This morning, I was talking to Mickey, and, we was, and I, I made this statement. I didn't even think about it being a part of the message, but uh, now I, I realize it was. I said, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would have ended up and brushed him out in prison. But it's God that has protected me. It's God that has kept me from evil, kept me from doing some things that I was tempted to do. And yet the Bible says there hath no temptation taken us, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, and he'll not suffer us to be tempted above that that we're able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I wonder where we would be this morning. It would be us that would be on death row. It would be us that would be behind bars. It would be us that would be addicted and, and, and so bad that we would steal even from those that we love the most if it wasn't for God. And so he says here, the Lord shall preserve thee. The Lord will protect me. He's the one that keeps me from evil. Robert Robinson, I was looking at the song this morning as I made my final preparations to preach this message and, and I thought about that song that, that he wrote Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing Robert Robinson was a preacher and yet he wrote this song and there's a part of that song that buddy it applies to me and I believe it will apply to you prone to wonder Lord I feel it prone to leave the God I love that's where we're at this morning. Dear friend, our natural state, our, our, the natural man, the flesh, would lead us away from God. And yet it's by the Holy Spirit that we're led to the feet of Jesus. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the Lord I love. I'm glad this morning, as Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation. But deliver me from evil. God, don't let me do anything that would bring a reproach upon your name. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, there's uh, no sin on, on this planet that can defeat you as long as you depend on the power of God. Notice verse 8. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. From now on throughout all eternity, God keeps me. And protects me and provides for me. He preserves me. God guards me every day. At all times and all places. Can I give you some good news this morning? Even when you're not faithful to God, God's faithful to you. Remember James 1 and 17 where it says, Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. From the Father of lights, now listen to this, in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You know what he was saying? God is faithful today, yesterday, tomorrow, every day that I wake up, God is faithful. He's the one that protects me. He is faithful. Even when I'm not faithful to him, he is faithful to me. Since it's football season, I'll tell you about a Alabama football player uh, talking to the star of the football team and he said to how are you and your girlfriend doing and he said we're doing terrible she told me last night that she'd be faithful to the end and he said well what's so bad about that she'll be faithful to the end duh I'm the quarterback now you football players you know there's an end in football don't you You might as well get ready for these sports illustrations because we're in the season right now. God will not only be faithful to the end, He'll be faithful beyond the end. When you feel like you're at the end of your rope and you've come to a dead end in the journey of your life and your enemy's about to win, whether it's disappointment, it's disease, discouragement, remember who God is and what God can do. Christian in Africa by the name of Frederick Nolan. Frederick Nolan was preaching the gospel. There was a uh, 
group of people that despised Frederick Nolan and they decided we're going to kill that missionary. We're going to shut him up. So they began to chase him. They chased him relentlessly everywhere as they were chasing him. One day they was hot on his heels and he, he ran into this cave that he found. While he was sitting there they came looking for him and while he was sitting there watching, there was this spider, after he got in the cave, began to weave a web across the opening of the door. And Frederick Nolan, he sat there expecting to be killed at any moment because his enemy was on his trail, they was out to take his life. But he watched in amazement as that spider began to weave its web all the way across that door. The enemy finally came and they just knew that he was in the cave. But when they looked at the entrance of that cave, they saw that spider web. And they said, there's no way he can be in there because if he'd have went in there, he'd have tore down that spider web. Frederick Nolan made this statement. And I love the words that he penned down. Listen to this. He said, where God is, a spider web is like a wall. And where God isn't, wall is like a spider web what he was trying to say is this is that God is my protector God is the one that watches over me when so far when so-called friends abandon you realize this God is your provider when the enemy begins to attack you remember that God is your protector remember what Jesus said to Simon Peter Simon Simon Behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But glory to God. I have prayed for you. That's one of the things that helped me early in my ministry. I appreciate folks praying for me. I, I, have you ever just been a little bit nosy and listened to somebody as they prayed? Have you ever heard somebody mention your name in prayer? You know what a blessing that is? When you just overhear somebody praying for you. And I appreciate that. But early in my ministry, when I was like Paul, I, I didn't come to you with enticing words of men's wisdom. I came to you in fear and trembling. And I was reminded early in my ministry of this. That every time I walk up the steps into a pulpit, there's one that is seated at the right hand of the Father that's praying for me. But he always gets his prayers through. Always does. The devil's trying to take you down. Remember, God is your preserver. God will give you a song for yesterday. If you've messed up yesterday and you regret some of the decisions that you've made, some of the things that you did, God will give you a song for yesterday. What God forgives, God forgets. God will give you a song for today. If you're here this morning and you're going through a difficult time, and I believe there's several right here in this room that are, God will give you a song for today. The Bible says he's a very present help in time of trouble. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I talked to one of my friends back there. He's going for cancer surgery this week. I don't know the outcome of that cancer surgery, but I do know this. God will give him a song for tomorrow. God will watch over him this week as he goes for the cancer surgery. And then God will give us a song for any day. No matter what the situation is, no matter what you're going through, he gives a song every day. He gives a song in the midnight hour. That's the God that you and I serve. I'm going to ask Connie to come lead us in a song. and We're going to have this time of invitation, by the way. It's not me that's given the invitation. If anything happens here this morning, it's not Luke Kidwell. It's God. It's God that draws people to himself. It's God that saves sinners by his grace. I am nothing except for a, a messenger to remind you that with God all things are possible. If you're lost, it's possible that you could be saved this morning if you'll come to him. So we're going to stand and God has spoken to you, you've got a need, and you need a song for today. You need a song for yesterday, or you need a song for tomorrow. Then why don't you just come this morning and bring that need to the Lord. Allow God to meet that need. Will you do that as we pray together, as we sing together, and as Daniel begins to pray? Would you just make your way to the altar if you have a need today?
Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you. Watching for you and for me. Oh, yes. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all. Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and heed not his mercies? Mercies for you and for me. Come home. Let me just make uh, uh, this announcement this week. I, I believe it's is it Wednesday, Dean, that they're going to have the funeral service at, at Sharps. I believe that. Okay, I, I I believe it's already been put at. Kathy, you told me when from six to eight at Sharps Funeral Home uh, in Oliver Springs, they'll be receiving friends from six to eight, and they have the service at, at eight o'clock. Do remember that family, and also Daniel. That is a service animal by the way, and, and so don't get the idea I'm bringing my poodle tonight. That's not what that is. That's a service animal. And uh, Pam, you can't bring all them puppies tonight. I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but, but uh, just wanted to make sure that you understood that. That is a, uh, that is a doctor prescribed service animal for, for Daniel. So uh, I'm glad that he came, and I hope even his dog got right here on the altar this morning. But, uh, <laughs> It's been good to be in God's house today. I hope you'll come back tonight. I want you to pray tonight that God will absolutely line this altar with folks that are calling on the name of the Lord to be saved and to get right with God. Uh, uh, we need a, a move of God like we've never needed it before. And, and we'd love to have you come back and be with us tonight. Uh, maybe you've just been getting around to it. You've not been coming on Sunday night, but you've been thinking about it. Tonight would be a good night to get started. We'd love to have you. If you're visiting with us, we hope you'll come back and be with us as soon as possible. God bless you. Thank you for being here this morning.